bit of rain, that would have helped. Absolutely, Rob. It's transformed things from, from dust to mud. And, uh, <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> it is, that's, that's great. But certainly uh, the, the air is fresh and clean and uh, the mornings are crisp and people are feeling sort of invigorated, really. But um, it'll be very beneficial for some of those crops that have been sown that uh, hadn't, the ground hadn't been irrigated um, for them to strike. Very beneficial for uh, residual herbicides to be put on. They'll actually work now with a bit of moisture. And of course, it'll do things like um, strike barley grass. Strike barley grass. Strike barley grass, yes, 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 yes. yes. Exactly. on the negative side. <laughs> well, the <laughs> other thing is seriously that the, the ground temperatures are going to plummet if we start getting a bit more cold weather. Absolutely. I think uh, we can't expect to see a lot of growth uh, from this, although some crops that are um, winter active, like you know, triticale, um, rye corn, oats and things like that, um, and the brassica families, they will, they will mm. still grow in the cooler temperatures, but uh, it's a bit late for the old grass and clover. There won't be much happening on that front. No, yeah. exactly. Nitrate yeah. poisoning will be the thing to look out for. Could be if we get some sort of uh, Indian summertime uh, with, with rapid growth and, and the nitrogen will concentrate in that new yeah. growth end. Yes, yeah. just watch that. Indeed. Now, what's the story with Montana and Bayer? Sorry, Monsanto and Bayer? Yeah, yes, sorry. Yes. Um, they're, um, Bayer is a huge corporate, of course, and, and so is Monsanto. Well, um, they're probably feeling a bit miffed, uh, Monsanto. They, they missed out on Syngenta. That went to Chem China uh, for 43 billion US dollars. It's a lot of money. A lot of money. Big, 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 big global company now. And of course, um, um, Bayer and, and, and Monsanto are, are having a chat about possible um, acquisition and, and what have you, and um, hasn't gone any further than having a chat. But it's interesting to see that, that two giants on the, on the um, agricultural side and the chemical side are uh, talking again and, and uh, looking at, um, I guess, economies of scale, mm. but even, even it, it's becoming sort of a few big boys at the top. We've seen it before in other industries, and then there's a lot of fallout and a lot of smaller ones development, it goes in cycles, but um, this, this, this could be potentially absolutely huge for the, for the global um, seed supplies and chemical supplies if, if Monsanto and Bayer do get together. It's only early days yet at this stage, but they're chatting. Yeah, well, I mean, that'd be a huge monolith. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely huge. What's, what's the Canadian finding that could be affecting everybody? Yeah, quite exciting. Um, a bit of um, GE, I guess, and, and uh, the Canadians of, um, well, with conventional breeding, go back to conventional breeding, the incremental gains are in sort of one and two and three percent per year. Mm -hmm. um, it was an accidental discovery in, in Canada where they put some, um, some corn enzymes in with some starch and just looking at some basic science and, and seeing if it still worked and found that um, some of the plants that uh, they were working with doubled in size, but increased their, seal, their seed yield by up to 400%. Really? Yes, absolutely amazing. And, and you know, even if you say, well, that's in the laboratory out in the field, it might be 200%. <coughs> even that so. That is absolutely phenomenal. And, and crops like canola, um, the potential is just huge for um, the, the oils and the, and the diesels and things like that, mm. if they can get those sorts of responses. In the past, they've had the plant size but the, the seed production has yes. never gone along with it. And so this is the different one. Exactly. And, uh, yep. Aphids. Yes, as you can imagine, with our warm, uh, very, very, very warm autumn, almost Indian summer into the winter, um, aphid numbers were absolutely huge out there. And so any of those very early um, sown wheat crops where the um, insecticide protection is in the seed would have worn off and, and probably vulnerable, and there'll be a lot of aphid in those crops now, which can uh, transmit um, barley yellow dwarf virus, of course. So a very timely insecticide for those early ones over the top now could be of benefit. The old boys used to say, don't plant wheat if it comes up before the shortest day. Therefore, the aphid numbers have gone down because of the mm. cold and, and the pressure's not there. Also, um, the septoria, spores that come in from the air. Um, basically, they're raining in now. They, they slow down and, and, and sort of almost stop uh, going into the crop in, in by the middle of June or late June. And so the old boys used to um, graze those crops with sheep 
eat the leaves off that carry the aphid and the um, and the septoria. <laughs> they're not. They're very, very wise. Very, yeah. very briefly, there's a new ugly thing arrived. Yes, the pea weevil, um, which is a new pest that's <coughs> come into the country. It's it's been found in the wire wrapper, and of course, a lot of um, garden pea seed is produced in the wire wrapper and potentially used down here in Canterbury with the likes of the, the Wattie's green pea crop. This little piece, pest attacks the flowering um, pea crop, eats flowers, nectar, pollen, um, and infects the plant, goes through the grub stage and hatches into a, um, into a, um, a weevil and can sort of manifest itself in the seed and just sit there dormant for up to two years, then it goes again. But it can fly 5Ks looking for flowering pea crops. We so just don't need it. We don't need it. No, just exactly. another threat that uh, has slipped through the net. Exactly, Dan. Welcome yeah. back and thanks very much indeed. Mm -hmm.